Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Um, I'm enjoying the comments already. They've got as heated and polarised as I <laughs> hoped. Um, yeah, good evening and welcome to another episode of Analog Television, an Analog Television episode all about cross-processing the joys, the funds. The or not. Or, or not. Or, <laughs> or the, the artistic choices. Shots that fired. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thrilled. Not only do we have ribs dialing in from yet another holiday, the man of a million holidays. Um, Rips is currently in deepest, darkest. De Devon? Devon? Yeah, yeah. Devon. Is that, that, is that what you say out here? Deepest, darkest Devon? That's the thing? Sure. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. <laughs> and from deepest, darkest London, we have Sandeep. Hi, everyone. Otherwise known as Give Me a Biscuit on Twitter, otherwise known as Say No to Cross Pro Advocate, President. Absolutely. I don't know. Does your cult have a presidency or is it? Uh... I'm the sole president and sole member. <laughs> so that's how it feels sometimes but, but yeah but that's perfect you you you, yeah. you represent a very strong view exactly so, so um yeah cross-processing so let's uh before we dive into some of the um, the debate around it i think um it's worth spending a little time on what it is so the reason that we're doing a whole episode on cross-process is because it's one of those things that a lot of people have heard about um whether that's because you've seen it talked about in a lot of demography articles whether people have mentioned it um, or whether you've heard people do it on, on YouTube, like doing film things, that guy's always doing crazy stuff with chemicals. Um, we're just going to talk about it. There is a huge amount of information out there. We're going to dissect some of it. We are going to have a bit of a discussion about when uh, you should or shouldn't, according to artistic tastes. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll just have a lot of fun. And then, of course, we have a competition at the end where you guys have submitted some cross-processed images, and we have forced Sandeep <laughs> to pick, I know. To pick one, and he and he wasn't allowed to go on a totally different hashtag and choose like hashtag E6 forever. So anyway, Ribs, do you want us to start us off? Because you, jokes aside, you have done a huge amount of cross processing, deliberate and accidental, on your on yeah, your yeah. So I mean, the idea is extremely basic. Every single kind of film that you can buy has a designated processing method by the manufacturer. So. C41 is supposed to be processing specific chemicals, E6 and a certain other type of chemicals. Black and white, same thing. Um, Cross-processing is when you intentionally or unintentionally use the wrong chemicals. And I'll say wrong only because the manufacturer tells you what is right. And therefore, if you do the opposite or different, then I guess it's wrong. Um, but, but yeah, it's as simple as that. And uh, my experiences honestly just started because I accidentally cross-processed. And then from there... Once I realized that I accidentally did it the wrong way, but I still liked what happened, mm. then I was like, the, my eyes were wide open at that point. You kind of mess around. You're like, oh, I like that. And then, <laughs> and then you go from there. Um, so yeah, I've dabbled it in a couple different directions in terms of you know, one, one type of film with another type um, and in opposite directions as well. And it's been interesting, um, potentially a waste of money. And now it means I have every single potential chemical that is necessary for photography in my bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and as Fair we enough. see from the intro video, that there's not a lot of space for spare chemicals. Uh, yeah, right. yeah. Considering I sit on the toilet when I do my enlarger work, I mean, that kind of tells you the story right there. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. And then, and then um, your experiences of, of Crossbow, so that is, that's, you do it at home, you don't necessarily send it off to the lab, or is there a bit of both? Yeah, no, I've done no cross-processing at the lab. I didn't even realize you could do that until not too long ago. But yeah, I guess certain labs allow you to do the opposite if you want. And it doesn't, if, if it's okay for them and it doesn't ruin their chemicals and machines or whatever, then I figured like mine are probably okay. Yeah. Um, but the first time I did it, I, I bought a bunch of expired film on eBay. I thought I was, you know, being cool. I was like, oh, I got all this cheap film. And I think I got confused because I did buy some expired slide film. And there was this box of, uh, film that was it's called color colorama 200 and for whatever reason from the moment i saw the box i was like oh yeah that's slide film so i shot it i did everything with completely thinking it was slide film developed it and then i was like oh look at these these are like th these look pretty interesting and i actually put a picture of the box on instagram and someone responded to me i think it was sarah in fact she was like dude that's not slide film that says c41 on the box and i was like what do you mean and then obviously i look at the box and it's very explicit and i was like oh shit well that's cool because what i got was slides they didn't look like ectochrome you know they didn't look mm. beautiful but they, that were, they were positives 
but yeah. they were positives and you put them on top of an led panel um or any kind of light source and you're like wow like those are beautiful color images severe color cast in this case it was blue um actually there's i think there might be a photo there if you want to share one um yeah. i'll tell you which photo we got here actually yeah it's photo number four let's jump through so i think this will kind of give you a very quick oh, wow. impression yeah and to be fair this was color corrected in lightroom like the entire image I, I shifted the blue out of there a bit um so you can still see that they're very blue but nonetheless this is from very expired old film and i took an expired roll of film that probably wouldn't have looked that great on its own if i had done it properly and i turned it into something that i thought was more interesting and also this was like kind of like a month into lockdown so this was on one of my like exercise walks and the, the most joy that I could get out of life at the time was doing this. Mm. So it, it meant that much more because it was like, wow, look at this really cool thing in the middle of not having anything else to do. So, so, so I don't know. I'm curious really quick, Sandeep, if you look at that image, how does that make you feel? It, it, well, you know, it's, it's light. So I'm kind of happy with that. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, I, I'll class that as a happy accident and, yeah. and, and a gateway drug to get you into doing slide properly. <laughs> It's definitely, definitely. That, that's my view on it. <laughs> I don't know if I'm moving in, in the right direction from your perspective, but I definitely gatewayed from there to other things. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, we've had um, Lisey's commented saying, Ribsy got woke. I think it was when you were like, your eyes were open to the, to the world of stuff out there. So that's your journey. In. And by the way, I think I've seen Marina on the comments who hopefully can confirm or not whether um, cross-processing without telling a lab will mess up their chemicals. Uh, Marina, <laughs> if you'd like to let us know. Um, so, Sandy, what's your history with cross-processing and slide film? So, so, even before you get to slide film, I mean, as Ribsy said, cross-processing means a lot of things to a lot of people. And in its basic form, it's chemicals that the manufacturer don't recommend for that particular film. And, you know, I've shot, um, accidentally just had black and white film cross-processed in C41. It was awful. It was near pan. The <laughs> lab made a mistake and it was grainy and rubbish. Oh. I can see on the chat people are talking about XP2. And there's a guy called Suki who does portraits in XP2, but processes them in black and white rather than the recommended C41. And actually they're outstanding. And wow. I have the, I'm a big fan of movie film. But at the time when I first started shooting, you could only really get C41 development. And it was OK, to be fair. But now I wouldn't touch it. It's got to be ECN2 because the whole point of the movie film is the real, you know, correct, lifelike but vivid colours. And then right from the beginning, of, um, you know, I, it's a bit weird. I was a black and white photographer digitally. But um, I remember this friend of mine, he said, oh, if you like colour or you want to try it, shoot Velvia with a, a polarising filter on the front. I'd never shot slide before. I had no idea. So I didn't have the fear of slide of how am I going to meter this? What do I have to look out for? I just metered it as if I would do any film. And then when I saw those slides in my hand that first time, I was hooked. There's nothing like it until you see yeah. them. And even more so if you then project it. Or they've yeah. seen slides projected. Yeah, it's really boring down your folks' house or whatever, and they start showing you 200 pictures of the beach um, on a slideshow. But the colours are amazing. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 you know, if you look back at why we have slide film, it was for representing colours that they could use in advertising, in magazines, in prints and shows that haven't been manipulated by a lab, a scanner or a printer. It's the true look. And then you get the slide films. So, so for me, I just, I just love slide film. I love saturated colouring. Yeah. I love true colouring. And that's what I would do it. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, it's, in fact, it, it's tough. I, I definitely agree with you in terms of when you look at a real slide, especially if you see a medium format one or even a yep. four by five, like you can't argue with that. I think especially if you develop it yourself, pull it out of there and you're like, wow, that looks crazy. Mm. Um, but that film costs a lot of money. Which uh, is another reason why, why, why spend, especially new film, why spend whatever it is, let's call it 15 pound a roll, yeah, I know yeah. some less, some more, and then you're going to junk it and see 41. <laughs> Listen Why to the didn't emotion. spend the five pound on the color plus and put it oh, in C41? Judgments, junk it. What? Uh, it creatively interpret the final image. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Sorry. You know what? I, 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 you know, I obviously sympathize with what you're saying, but I did something potentially even crazier. I took Cinestill film, 
that I bought for probably 19 pounds. I'm not going to say where, but it hurt because yeah. there was none, none. I think I got it on eBay, actually. There was none around. So I was desperate. And I was like, I'm going to do this. And this is also during lockdown. I went out at 11 at night, literally empty streets, shot a whole roll of Cinestill. Petrol station by any chance? No, no. Actually, I didn't have one around me, but I, you're, <laughs> that's a good point. Um, but then I took that roll, and then I intentionally processed it in E6. Yeah. And when you talk about junking, I mean, I don't know if we could get more junky than what I did. But one of my most liked photos on Instagram was one that came out of that role. And oh, people no. loved it. Hang on. Okay. Wait, so let's show this up. So which of the um, photos you sent me, which number? Go is? to photo number one. Number one. Might be a little bit tough to see because this is actually all of the photos. Um, okay. But you're going to see, that's the mood right there. Yeah. That's not that's not Cine still per se, you know, because the look is definitely not what anybody would expect. But... But that's the mood, and that if you if you see kind of towards the bottom, there's a there's a photo with a lot of light trails there. Actually, sorry, it's it's right in the if you look at the fourth row from the top. Yep. There's a photo kind of right in the middle that has this long light trail coming across. That photo, people are, were obsessed with it on Instagram, and I'm not you know, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, not, not at all. But my <laughs> point is, people really love this like purpley like like Gotham City on steroids like bizarro world that that cross processing created. And, you know, I, I, I junked it, as, as you would say. So <laughs> I, I, I feel like if you know what you're doing or if you get lucky, which I think in my case I got lucky, um, you can do some cool stuff. I don't know. I, I think it might be worth it. Well, hang on a sec. Let me, let me also, I think I've got your video here, Rips. I'm just going to run, Hi. like, just maybe half a minute, a minute, just so people can see. Because here you've got the, the scans that are slightly closer up. So yeah. um, I think we've also got some great footage of you wandering the streets. Um, with a tripod over your over your shoulder, like a, a real night photographer. So let me just switch to screen share, and you'll be able to hear some of this come through. One second. I just wrapped up shooting here at night and I can't recommend this enough, honestly. If you live somewhere where there's some interesting stuff to look at, even at nighttime, especially somewhere that's well illuminated and has some interesting light. And then it goes into the, the life philosophy stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to cut you off. No, no, but there we go. You had some really interesting things. So that is, um, you know, that was sinister, but very much a positive. And you still had the red halation, right? Around the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, re the, the, the exact... that didn't change that was probably one of the few things you could recognize yeah oh fantastic okay then so um so there's been a debate going on in the comments we talked about this a little bit before xp2 is a black and white film designed to be developed in c41 to give black and white results so that's black and white in yes. color negative chemicals gives black and white there's a debate have you ever processed it as a straight black and white or in black and white chemicals but Suki, who's on the comments, Smokey Lovebeard is the guy who does the portraits, and they're stunning. Ah, so there we go. So that's perfect. So he he's shooting black and he's processing in black and white chemicals to get a yeah. And if you look on his feed, um, he can put in his comment where it is. But it it, it does work. I mean, XP Two is one of my favourite films. It's one of the first films I started with because of the ease of C forty one processing, and I probably would m mostly do C forty one, but seeing it in black and white, it does actually work. Mm. Yeah. But don't say that too loud because that's extra. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the other thing I think we should probably add into this mix, and they sent me an article actually to include in the discussion, is Lomography, because I think they are um, advocates for, and in fact, they call a lot of their slide films X Pro and recommend c 41 ing it as a start, and that's in 110, 35 mil, 120, and 16 mil movie film actually as well. Um, and a lot of people I think uh, probably first came across cross process or might have done through Lomography, either they're buying their films and seeing that or um, looking at their content. Um, they've always been a fan of it. I think they've always, they like the, the color shifts. I think the aesthetic as a company is less about technical perfection and more about happy accidents. And I think that's true. Do you feel ribs when you cross process, you get less control over the final result, even if it's the same film, same chemicals, because it's cross process, it's not, the manufacturer hasn't created it for that in mind. Do you see that or do you find it pretty consistent film to film? Uh, I definitely think it varies film to film. Um, I think that's 
that's one of the interesting things about it. Um, you really don't know what you're going to get when you switch this up. And I, generally, though, you, if you do develop a lot of film at home, you will kind of get into a groove. And I think that part is, is easy. Um, you will always get an image, but it's interesting how the exposure matters there, especially if you're kind of like not really being too careful. I shoot with a lot of automatic cameras, so I find that they generally do the job. But if, if I get lazy and, and don't really meter a certain way, that's where things really start to fall off the cliff kind of randomly. Um, but so far, I'd, I'd say I've lost probably three full rolls of film. Like, And when I say lost, I mean like just crap. One of those was Cinestill, in fact. Um, in my experimentation, the first time I did it, I, I didn't overexpose anything um, just because I was like, well, it didn't even occur to me. Uh, I basically got black rolls, like even if you held them up to the sun from like across the street, like you still couldn't see an image. So, so yeah, it really depends. And I think for me, I, that's actually part of why I like it because I find that I learn things when I cross process. Um, and I think that's one of the, the, the good things about trying this. Cause when you, when you follow the instructions on the kit, you learn how to do that specific task and you can do it well and get really consistent results and save money. And that's very important. But I would not have learned anything about chemistry. And when I say chemistry, I don't mean like super, super deep, but I, and I'd start doing film, especially developing like basically within the last year. And so the whole history of film and all that in terms of the chemical and chemistries, I didn't know a jack about that. And I learned it, or at least I learned some of it through these experiments that I've been doing. So I think that's where some of the serious value is. If you really want to like kind of go backwards in time and see how things have developed, cross-processing is a way to to learn about that because you oftentimes you'll have to go on a forum and read and you'll kind of learn like why one way reacts differently than the other um yeah it, it's all over the place and it, and it kind of forces you to do some research yeah and um actually what that brings on nicely to i think the next thing which is sandeep despite the the store you've laid out um yeah. uh, and we will start with that for sure um and then in fairness like i i thoroughly enjoy the debate on twitter i thoroughly enjoy flying the flag for um, for CrossPro, even though in my personal shooting, I shoot straight E6 way more than <laughs> CrossPro sets. But that's not the point. That's not the point of yeah. Twitter. Moderate debate is, has no place in, in today's world. Um, the And well, we'll share the results, actually, of the Twitter poll that we did in, in a short while. Despite the fact that you've set up your store, let's go through a project that you've, gone, you've done recently. Yeah. And I think it, it pulls onto Ribsy's point of learning, because you can shoot a film and then randomly process it and if that's the one thing you've done and the light change and the camera and everything you will learn something from it but you've taken a little more of a scientific approach um so i'm going to pull up your photos it actually starts with three photos that i think you wanted to talk through first yeah and and, and, and let's let's be clear here do what you want as an artist do what you want as a photographer you know i'm not i don't want people to get the idea i'm judging them I think the guess, best way to look at it is I would be the mar a great marketing department for the Association of Slide Film Manufacturers. <laughs> you know, I'd be the advocate. And that's Very where cool. I come from on here. It's it's not don't expo. It's my view is I love slide. I want you all to love slide. Mm. And I'd love you to put it all in E6. So, so yeah, so look, I'm happy to talk through. I don't know if you've got the yep, on the screen. Well, so, yeah. so, you know, we start with some sort of examples of, and again, I'll... I'll Try and bite my tongue and not be biased, but here's some beautiful Velvia 50. <laughs> it's a car, it's a little car stereo. It's just the, the vivid, true colors that you really get from slide. And if you were to expro that, it would be grainy, it would be a little bit flat. But I just want to show, you know, hmm. you, you hold that in your hand as a slide as well. It's amazing. And if you move, I don't know if you move to the next one. No, I'm doing it now. Yep. At the yeah. Escort. The Escort. That's on new Kodak. 100 e100 and again it, it just really brings out the beauty of what you're seeing there is a polarizer stuck on there and uh, you know you circle it to remove the reflections where you want enhance the colors where you want and 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 again the other point that i'd raise up here is that's not a cheap film slide film's not cheap i don't want to have a random grainy result i'd rather shoot c41 if i'm going to do that and or or some sort of expired thing. Um, and we'll keep moving on, but the other, the other, I guess, argument I always come up against is, well, that's fine for new film. What about expired film? It must be a waste of doing E6 on expired film. Well, 
if you move to the beach shot, yep. that's E100GX. That was taken about three years ago in Florida on something like 10-year-old expired slide. E6, and again, not one of these sort of, you've got to drop a stop or whatever it is per decade or whatever one advises. Shot at box speed. Yeah. There is a bit of trust you're having here on the slide that it's been properly stored. I get that. But take the risk sometimes. And if you move up to the sunset one, that's Kodak E64 from 1987 hmm. that's been freezer stored. You know, is it the best picture? No, but look at the colors. It hasn't really shifted. There might be a slight bit of purple. If I had shot that, and that's a holiday shot, and then come back and expro, I might have had a ruined shot there, hmm. which is another way of sort of look at it. But but let's get into the experiment. So well, I understand. I, that, I think I think that's a really lovely point, though. The 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 separating whether films expired from cross process. One does not mean the other. The other does not mean yeah. one, right? And and well stored slide film can look as good as as the day it was done. Like and again, people can get distracted. Kodachrome is, is a problem, not because it was slide film that's expired. It's because the chemicals don't exist. Okay. Like, yeah, exactly. Again, that's exactly. a totally different problem. You will you will have to cross process that because you can't get chemicals that are true. For yeah. It. But you're not talking about that. You're saying a, a, a an E6 slide from before. You can cross process it if you want. You probably bought it for less money, but you don't have yeah. to. You don't have to, and you know, don't be scared of slide as well as the other point. Mm. Everyone worries about its latitude and its metering. Yes, be mindful. I don't disagree with that, yeah. but don't be afraid. If you meter for any other film you shoot, you can meter for slide. Yeah, that is what I think my point. So, so you know, look, I can't, I can't sit here and preach, which, and not have done it myself. So yeah. I had it pro before, and I've not really liked it, which is the other reason I can sort of sit here and say. It's not for me personally, but I thought let's let's try an experiment. So it's interesting you mentioned Lomography and their Expro films. So when I got Lomography Peacock 110, I did it in E6 just because <laughs> you have to. You just I have remember to. you sending the photos on Twitter. I think yeah. Yeah, but so so um, and this is your fault now, Paul. You got that uh, Agfa Pressia CT in, mm -hmm. and you recommended on your site Expro it. Yeah. So obviously I'm going to look at that and say, uh -uh, no way. <laughs> but but you've got to experiment. So so I knew I had two really good days of sunshine coming up. I take the dog for a walk every morning at half seven, so I know the time is exactly right. Same location, my local park is during lockdown. There's only so much I can do. So I thought one day I'll shoot the same scenes. The next day another roll with the same scenes. I use the same camera, which is my Nikon 35 Ti. So I've got no control over the aperture or exposure. It's all auto. And then before sending it to the lab, I didn't know which one was day one or day two and randomly just marked one. Please do this in C41. So I think you're going to go on and show the sort of... Yeah, absolutely. So, so, this, so, you, you said, so your, your goal was the same photos, two different days. As much as possible, same photos, same location, same camera same weather, same light, same time of day. You know, have I written up a methodology and <laughs> report and equipment list? No, I'm not a scientist. But, but this, but this will be get. written up, this will go. Yeah, and, and yeah, so everyone who's looking at these, uh, Emulsive on Saturday, UK lunchtime, the, I've done a write-up of this, so you can see all the sort of non-biased um, <laughs> review of XPRO and not XPRO, just again for your own to, to your point, Rizzo, it's education as well for all of us. You yeah. know, let's do something that, and, and share it so people can learn and try stuff themselves. And let's let's see. So, so we're gonna. So we've now got the flowers up. It's the first one we'll yeah. go through. So first of all, we'll pause on each one. For first of all, let people guess which one is cross pro, which one is um, straight, is E6, yeah. um, and then they can also think about which one they prefer. Um, so hopefully that's given people enough time to, to have a think. So which one is which, Sandeep, and then which one do you prefer and why? So looking at my screen, it's left, so uh, the bottom one with the dark, no detail in the shadows is, is <laughs> a C41. Oh, the really and vibrant the, one with really interesting colours. Yeah, yeah, no, I think I see it. You mean the one with the washed out highlights on the yellow <laughs> compared to the perfectly exposed one on, on the other side? But look, the, the scenes are limited to the park. I, could, I couldn't go anywhere else to compare. I think what this shows me is 
if I want true representation of what I've seen in color, then I'm going to do E6. If I want it to have a hit or a kink or something in there, then all right, X Pro it. But you're not for me. I don't know what I'm going to get out of it yeah. until I've actually processed it. I don't know what it looks like now. Does that look better? It may be slightly a more interesting shot in the X Pro, to be fair, but only because it's it's really boosted the sort of brightness of the colours and the real deepness of the shadows. But I'll leave it up to the viewers to decide. But you know, for me, it's still I'd rather the true colours. Ribsy, what's your? Hopefully, you can see this as well. What's your initial reaction to which one you're drawn to more? So I, I actually cannot see it because, as I meant, I'm not on my phone watching Apologies. it at the same time. But I... All right, in which case, based only on what we've described. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he, he mentioned a couple key things that I think are classic cross pro like issues, which is, you know, shadows kind of disappear, um, you know, color casts show up, and you're not getting that true representation of what you think your eyes saw. And I say think only because, you know, everything is subjective. Mm. But, but you're totally right. It, it is not an actual representation of what your mind remembers seeing. Um, but I mean, that, that right there is, is kind of the, that, that's the whole point. Some yeah. people, some people want that, some don't intentionally, you know, um, but no, go ahead. No, I was about to say the interesting thing when you were saying about, you know, which one is, is, is better again, that's subjective and we'll keep going yeah. through these. I, I would bet quite a lot of money that on Instagram, that cross pro one would get more likes, more attention, more shares. Yeah. 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 And it, but, I, but I think that is partly, as you say, the higher contrast, the highlights are, are, are blown, but they're brighter. Um, and on a small screen, it's a punchy image. I'm not saying that's good. I'm not saying that's aesthetically what you're aiming for. Yeah. Um, but one of the measures that people often go by, uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, today is, is the impact in a very small amount of time on a small screen. I, I th I'd be surprised if the crossbow one didn't have that. Well, you can, you can add to that also, I think, the, the, the philosophical piece, which is, if you tell people that's cross process in the caption or somewhere, like that alone will get people to like your photo. And well, I, it's the classic eBay selling market: Lomography, crossphobic slide, film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slide it here. Yes, but I think I, I think <laughs> in Great this way case, you know, Kodak Gold, but yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, there's a piece of that which is you know marketing, and and there's marketing and, and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. But I think the other side of that is it kind of goes to that journey that I think I went through. And I think a lot of other people have gone like, there's a certain appreciation for like messing around and, and achieving something that is like cool or, or that you actually appreciate or that broadly people can appreciate. So I think just the fact that you cross process itself, I think that's why a lot of people actually are drawn to it because mm -hmm. it, it, it's part of that, like step two, you know, once you do everything the right way then you're like, wait a minute, what if I do it the wrong way? <laughs> and, and maybe press, there, press that button. Exactly. It's the only way you're going to know how to do it. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. and then, it, then, it, then it comes into your arsenal of things that that you can create and looks that you can achieve. Which I think when we talked about creative film last week and, and pinhole before, a lot of being, I think, a film photographer in particular is playing with these things so that yeah. you know that for a certain look or a certain project or a certain vision in your mind, what you can reach for. So we've gone to yeah. the next photo. So this is the park with an incredibly similar composition. Um, yeah, so again, I was trying my best to remember where I stood <laughs> where I stood for each picture, but at least I knew the scene I was going for. So this is, this is the, and sorry everyone if I'm looking down, this is the playground scene um, with the one on the left higher up being the E6 and the, again, quite bright highlights, quite deep shadows and much more contrast uh, on the X-Pro scene. And, and again, this comes down to what do you want? I like the E6 version but again that's my choice of I like the colors I like the truer colors I think if you cropped the X Pro one and maybe took out the sky a little bit you might like the sci-fi look it gives mm. if you're five years old and um... <laughs> <laughs> you were doing so well you nearly recommended it oh it's okay oh, it's okay I've, we still got a few. I've, I've got to i've got to stand for my right no but but, but <laughs> again it comes down to this but i think my again my problem comes with i know the e6 is going to give me that i don't know the cross pro is going to give me that you know it could be completely different and be washed out or no good so it's worked in this case I, I'll, I'll you know i'll hands up it's worked in this case the x pro and i think what's interesting is the the things we've talked about before the stronger <coughs> con the, the stronger contrast the more muted colors um, they, they, they bring out different things in the photos. So if I look at the E6 one, I really like the E6 one because I think the, 
the primary colors of a yeah. of a play school really work then that that really shines to its clarity and its strength and the detail in the background you've got the swing that that you you lose entirely in the cross pro but when i look at the cross pro i see the leading lines of the shadows yeah um really strong shadows that give you that sort of a bit more ominous sci-fi effect and you look back then at the, the the e6 one and they're there but that's not what i noticed so it's almost like a different it's almost a different compositional element to being pulled out yeah you know what's funny um I just thought of this. It seems like Sandeep and I both went on a bit of this journey during lockdown. And I have a feeling that's not a coincidence because you kind of think about what happened in lockdown and how things kind of transform into this like mundane, you know, yeah. you walk your dog every day, same place. I don't know if you were going anywhere else, but no, that was probably... What else can I do? Because exactly. I'm bored of taking the same shots. Exactly. Yeah. So it, it's interesting how that will take something super routine and give you this whole other option. And part of it is not even under your control, which, you know, that's that's kind of the excitement. Um, I, I think that might speak also to the core of, like, why this cross-processing kind of mm. phenomenon is, is, is still, like, popular. Yeah. But I also, I think, I mean, that pulls me into a different thought where I, when you talk about that, actually, that's a good idea. Like, if I was doing an... Uh, a post-apocalyptic project in a city that would have been quite easy in the last six months. Um, Cross-processing might be a legitimate creative choice for getting that very deliberately strong choice. Um, and in that case, it's kind of like, um, you know, when you go black and white or color, you could sit here and have a great debate. <laughs> we could have the say yeah, no, yeah. To, say no yeah. to black and white because you lose color. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> That's not at all what the world looks like. But of course, it's a choice of how to be... Um, how do we bring this up? On a very lighter note, by the way, we have had a couple of comments about our beards, and I just think is worth pointing out now. Someone wants to vote on the best beard. Someone else has talked about this is a great example of the evolution of the beard. Which yeah. I don't think they mean. Left I guess to I'm right. in the middle. Well, exactly. This is it. Left to right yeah. suggests that mine is the ultimate beard, having evolved from ribs, which I really. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Sandeep's beard is fresh because it, it, it's freshly groomed. Oh. I don't know if it's always like that, but it's looking good. And then. Yeah. The, the color scheme is, is so legit. Yeah. <laughs> like, you've got a beautiful transition there. I, I appreciate that a lot. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, was it, did you cross-process it? Or, or no, no, it? no. Just pure black and white. This is, oh, that's a black and white. <laughs> there we go. Lovely. Sorry, slight digression, but it's, uh, I that's think right. it's it worth it. Okay, then. On to the next one, the goalposts. So, look, there's not a huge difference in this one. It, it, this is down to aesthetics. It's a clear picture. Um I don't have an opinion here. I think I just prefer the U6 because the the X Pro one's not giving me anything different enough to make me think that would have been the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And I think it's marginal, to be fair. Yeah. No. And actually, the um, what I like about the, the the Cross Pro one is that you get more detail on the rust because the contrast has been bumped up so so strongly. And um, what's interesting though is here you see some of the other artifacts that you get from Cross Process. So you can see in the sky much heavier grain. And also what looks like some vignetting as well that's much stronger. Yeah. And you're using the same camera, same lens. Yep, yep. So, so, I'm also, so I'm not doing anything. The only difference there is I'm obviously closer on the X-Pro one, but yeah. But I think your, your point is valid. It, it, even if I wasn't, the rust would stand out a lot more. Yeah. And that's where you then get, like, you look at the six and the, the, the color, the contrast and the brightness across the, the slide are very uniform. The cross pro, you do get that very that stronger darkening in the top left, bottom left that you can see, and then again, the sky is the perfect place to see the the much more visible grain. Um, okay, number eight. Here we go. We've jumped. This is actually from a slightly different project, but I think it's so it's interesting. And uh, so well, this it's, is it's, it's the same building, so as you can tell, it's near where I I say I work. Obviously, not been there since March, <laughs> but one of them is I think they're both struggling to remember the. The, the E6 one is definitely Provia, and the other one I'm pretty sure is also Provia uh, X-Pro. And they're both shot through the Holger. Huh. And, you know, I think th the skies, in fairness, help the E6 one in terms of the cloud shapes. But the contrast is is huge, and I love the E6 one. It's just yeah. vibrant, it's bright, it smacks you in the face with the colouring. Whereas the X-Pro one... Again, it's kind of like low five, which okay is that's what you want with your hashtag Lamography hashtag Xpro. <laughs> <X -pro laughs> yeah. Say yes to Xpro. Exactly. <laughs> um, 
and it's down to taste but i look at that and i'm i'm totally e6 on this one i can't even be pretend to like the non-e6 one i think that's fair i think the e6 one is stunning and i would love love to see that in real life the the physical slide i, I printed that on the i think it was on even a metallic paper and it's amazing yeah it's yeah. come out beautifully awesome um, so then we then, then i guess we go to the yep. next one the pylons so left is e6 right is x pro bland scene to be fair so the e6 is only okay the right one i think someone on twitter commented that looks like a grunge album cover yeah um i i think in my multi post i talk about that's what a 12 year old would have on his wall if, <laughs> if he or she liked to look all one of their artist posters so so the x pro works i think mainly because the scene works for the x pro there to be fair yeah yeah and again the 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 the, the whack up the contrast makes the pylon so much more interesting because rather than yeah. different shades of grey, it's suddenly bright white, dark lines um, against a very grainy and again, really vignetted sky. Yeah. Um, no, that's brilliant. So you're going to sell it in, in the history back to a grunge band for... Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. If any of you out there listening in a grunge band, come yeah. talk. Um, <laughs> then the, the, fi the, the final one is a swing. Um, I think the E6 colors are better. I think the composition on the X-Pro one's better. So for that reason, I think the X-Pro one works just because I've composed it a little bit better. Hmm. Brilliant. No, that's super helpful. And as I say, for somebody who is um, say no to Cross Pro, you have proven that you're not afraid of facing your demons. Um, so that's- It's that's... still the devil's work though. You know, let's, not, let's, not, let's not get away from that. <laughs> <laughs> the devil's work. There was a lot of, of uh, yeah, morality language being thrown around, I think. Um, that's fantastic. No, that's amazing. And thank you so much because I think, as Ribs was saying earlier, learning and knowing uh, the differences. I've never seen before someone take that scientific approach to it. Um, I've seen people sort of, and I've done it myself, where I've taken things and, and known what to expect from a straight process. And then the cross process has surprised me. And I can sort of imagine yeah. what it would have been like. But it's really revealing to have that there. Um, and again, that is a few couple of caveats. That is a certain film that is expired. That's a, you know, that is one type of cross processing that we're sort of talking about um, and a few other things. And the, I want to just jump back to the Sinister one. because I think we mentioned it at the start and obviously Ribs, you've talked about putting it through E6. Is Sinister in C41 cross process or not? Oh boy. I, uh, I've been trying to get to yes. the, the bottom of this question, and I've, I've actually talked to a lot of people who definitely have thoughts um, and, are, and are close to the product. So I, I still don't have the answer, yes or no. But whatever the hell they're doing in that secret lab is it makes a difference because, you, uh, in my experience, you process uh, Cinestone C41, whether it's cross pro or not, it comes out giving me what I think looks like what my eyes saw outside of the halation part, and then. When you kind of go to the base product, which is the Vision 3 film, if you process that in C41, in my opinion and in my results, it does not look at all like what my eyes saw. And I, well, it doesn't look as adequate to what my eyes saw, and I don't like it. Um, Do when you, you think part of that is the, the fact there's no remjet and you've, the anti-halation layer is gone? So, you yeah. know, the, the trademark orange glow yeah, yeah. is the so, difference, maybe. Honestly, the orange glow is what gets all the attention, but I honestly think that's the least relevant part of this whole thing. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to get to the bottom of this as far as I could potentially go, but I think there's other stuff that happens in there because um, the, the, the end results and the, and the colors, the shadows, and everything is just so different. And there's, there's definitely, I'm thinking, there's definitely something else that happens there with, with this raw product that makes it actually work really well in C41 as opposed to... Um, technically being cross-processed. Is it cross-processed? I think I, I would agree with you that, I guess, technically, Scientifically, yes, yes but they're, yeah. they're selling it as C41, designed for C41, to your yeah, yeah. point, with whatever they're doing. Yeah, yeah, and and I, I've done experiments. As I, I started shooting some Vision 3, and I've actually cross-processed it in C41, and I cross-processed it in RA4 chemicals, which are supposed to be very close to ECN2, based on what I've read. Um, and neither one has given me acceptable results from my point of view although the ra4 one i actually really like the look it's like i threw a nice instagram filter on there and it looks 
cool. And and actually, we can show that right now. I can I can tell you which image. If you pull up image number uh, six. Yeah. Um, so that image that was taken um, along the water along there the Thames. I don't know exactly where, but close to. You can figure it out if you just look at the point of view. Um, at low tide, and you can see this like very rusty, like metallic-y kind of like a look to these images, and I love it. It's not what I wanted, and ultimately I was disappointed because what I wanted was to get that true cinema color that I was expecting, and it's not that. But I, I love how that came out. Yeah, However, while you were talking as well, I, I quickly flashed up. You you did a video about the um, the vision in um, C41. I don't like yeah. it, even made it into the title. So if people want to see a little bit more, I showed one of the yeah, photos, yeah. and then you can go and, and listen to, to Ribsy talk about that on his, on his channel doing film things. Um, but yeah. yeah, so I mean, this is the interesting thing, right? That the that it is developed, it is it is designed for C forty one. So going back to our original definition, cross processes when you use chemicals the manufacturer doesn't recommend. Cinestills still say C forty one. Yeah. No, it's derived from Vision Film, which is then eighty two N. Yeah. Um, and that's where it then gets pretty interesting. And then if you want to, you can just make E six like ribs and <laughs> go this I, way well, on the dice. <laughs> I did. I, I finally got a hold of an ECN2 kit in the U.S. Um, from one of the companies that's selling one out there, and and there's some stuff in in, the, in Europe as well. I just the only reason I got it is because they actually hooked me up. But um, the point is, I developed it. I developed my last roll of Vision Three in ECN2 chemicals, and I was just floored by the results. I loved how everything looked. The colors, you know, that feeling Sandeep was describing with the colors with regards to slide film. Mm -hmm. um, that's kind of like what I felt when I saw my images. Um, from from the Vision Three on ECN two, and there's this particular image of a of a of a Chevy Impala, which I actually didn't share with you, which I should have. But I just remember seeing that car in person. It was a hot day in New York City. It was like 95, which is above 30 Celsius, humid, classic summer. And this dude pulls up to a gas station. I was kind of just biking around Brooklyn, and he pulls up in this old Chevy Impala from like 67, 68, something like that. And then he starts w cleaning it. He pulls out a hose from the gas station and starts to hose it down. And the car, just the sunlight was hitting it. It was sparkling. And I was like, holy shit, that car looks amazing right now. And I was like, hey, can I grab a couple of pics? And he was like, yeah, whatever. So I took like 10 photos. The point is, I looked at these photos, and there's this one specific one, which I think is the best one. And the colors just popped. And I was like, this is why you shouldn't cross-process this film. So if, if, if I don't agree with cross-process, it's a, this specific instance. Because Vision 3 film, at least the raw product that you get, not Sinistro related or anything, that raw product just, in my opinion, looks not good in any of the cross-processing. And I think what you lose is not worth it in the end. The same way kind of that Sandeep, I feel like, was saying you kind of lose the beauty of E6 by cross-processing. I feel like you lose the beauty of that with this. However, there are people out there who seem to have gotten nice results with C41 based on things I've seen on YouTube and elsewhere. I don't know if I did something wrong or, you know, there's something more going on, but... I personally just did not think that the film shined how it was supposed to when cross-processing it. No, I think that's, that's perfect because I think one of the reasons that people cross-process and whether that's from slide or from um, yeah. movie film is because C41 is cheaper and more labs do it. You yeah. do it at home with fewer concerns. You don't have to get into the REM jet. Like, there's, there's a lot of reasons why you might think that that is just the simple way. And again, like no judgment here, that's a legitimate reason. If you, if you can only have either afford the time or the money or whatever it is, you're yeah, yeah. an image out of it. Yeah, and if yeah definitely, one. definitely no judgment. Um, but I think if you shoot Vision 3, you should give yourself the opportunity to have at least one roll via ECN2 so you can see the, the potential there. Because um, if, you, if you never do ECN2, you will never see what the film truly is capable of. And this is movie film. Like, yeah. this stuff is made to look beautiful. And I don't think you'll get to experience the joy of that if you never try ECN2. I'm getting a lot of abuse on the chat that Analog One Land doesn't stock ECN2. Um, it, it is coming. <laughs> I'm going to leave it there. It is coming. It might be linked to the chat. There. You have to do that yay, that, that uh, sound effect you do with the clapping. Oh, yeah. Yay. <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> but I don't have a date yet, so uh, don't clap too loudly. But it's coming. It's coming. It's on the way. Um, no, I think that's that's super helpful. Okay, then let's let's. Um, well, I'll tell you what. First of all, I'm gonna make a little bit of a pitch for um, the lamography side. So, um, 
they 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 were they loved the Twitter poll. <laughs> I think they retweeted it, which which gave quite a boost to the Say Yo to Cross Pro <laughs> numbers. Um, they actually sent me an article, which I'm going to go through first. But one of the things I wanted to do is show a couple of my photos. That so I, I had the the first slide film I shot was Velvia 50, and I think the reason that I shot Velvia 50 was this was years and years ago. I think Ken Rockwell, um, who I think guys might have heard of, runs a photography website, a lot of uh, camera reviews and stuff. Um, it might not even be there anymore, but at the time he had like the, the best, you know, best camera, best photography setup or whatever. And his, the, his recommended setup was a 35 mm SLR and Velvia 50 over and above any digital camera, even though that's where all his money came from was the, the digital camera reviews. Cause he said the photos you get on that, except for portraits where it gets a bit warm, the photos yeah. are unbeatable. And that was enough to make me take one on, I think it was on Safari actually, I think on my honeymoon. And totally blown away. So that's my, my first point is I definitely have not, I probably wouldn't ever cross process Velvia. But then when I got into the <laughs> Lomography stuff and when they say, you know, X Pro, that's when I just thought this might be interesting. And this is when I was wandering around London with a, a Diana and a couple of random stuff and I just thought it'd be fun. Um, so I sort of got into it that way, partly just to see what kind of photos that come out. And there's a couple that I, even now looking back, I really, really enjoy. So the one I'm showing at the moment is actually a double exposure um, shot on a Diana and then cross processed. So, you know, this is my heavy lomography days, man. <laughs> yes, totally on brand. Exactly. This is, this is me, this is me running fully at that, that wagon and saying, yes. Yeah. Um, but I still like the results. And I think part of it is because the, the, it, it's a deliberately surreal image, right? It's not meant to be, this is what I saw yeah. because this didn't exist, but what it was, was very striking. I think it changed my mindset of what photography could be from this is what I saw to, this is part of what I saw. Cause I still remember very clearly what that day was. It was a really sunny summery day. I think I was walking around um, one of the rural parks in central London. Um, and that takes me back straight away. Cause actually the color shifts, the greens, the yellows, the brightness um, is, is very indicative. Um, and, and I still love it. This is one that's cross processed on, I think again, Lomography X Pro 35 mil. Um, and this was taken in uh, Disney World in Epcot which again, if people know, is, is a science theme, science based. There's a load of crazy stuff in there. Um, this photo out of all of the ones on the roll came out the most green, the most contrasting, <laughs> and the most sci-fi out of all. And it's of the, the, the golf ball. Um, and I just love it because again, from a, that was not what I saw at the time. But again, I look at that and I go, that is, that is so Epcot. <laughs> and I'm glad that I now know how to replicate that, I think. Um, going back to that point of like, that's in my creative arsenal now. Like, I'm, it's unlikely there'll be many situations, in fairness, where I'll pull that out versus a straight E6, but I like that I have it. And then the other one is, is a portrait. And this is here where you can see the classic greens, the reds, and portraits generally, not a huge fan of, actually in fairness, slide, I struggle a little bit. I need to do more ectochrome portraits because Kodak keep telling me that that's perfect. But I've had issues with color, color cast before, but I enjoy this one because it was a drinking session. <laughs> and actually things looking a bit green and a bit funky in a drinking session, again, um, aren't too bad. And then I do finish with Velvia 50 with a polarizing filter on, on holiday, bright blue sky. I mean. Can't go wrong. I've got to love it. Exactly. Yeah. I've got to love it. All right, a um, couple of people were mentioning as well, actually, uh, Lomography Cross Pro availability. Yep, you're right. It's very difficult to get hold of at the moment. Um, they are on it. They know they are working hard. It's been one of the many things that have been hit by um, uh, COVID and the supply thing there, but it will, it will come back at, uh, at some point. This isn't one that's going to disappear. All right, then. Let's talk about the Twitter poll and some of the things that people said. So in a world, again, of heavily polarized, angry debates, Sandy Panay... <laughs> perfect for Twitter. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Perfect for Twitter. And two years ago, uh, Sandy Panay ended up in this conversation. We did a poll. 60% said... And we deliberately set it up where there was nobody was allowed to say whatever is right for you or, um, you know, art is subjective or yeah. different days demand... Diff no, none of that. It was either yes, no, cross pros, just commit, man. Um, last time we ran it two years ago, who won, Sandeep? Which side? Um, let me think now. No. I think you might have got your ass handed to you on a plate, <laughs> if I could use that word. I think it was a draw. 
No, sixty percent. Sixty percent said say no to Crossbro. Forty percent said say no to Crossbro. Yeah. Horribly out of date vote. Um, the... And then you were stupid enough to run. <laughs> I said we need a second. We need the people's <laughs> vote. Um, <laughs> but we we replicated exactly the same. And here we go. This is what Twitter. We gave them two and a half days. Totally neutral uh, comments, absolutely even. And 135 <laughs> people waded in, and it was 51.9% to 40. 52. <laughs> Which you can round to 50 50, as you wish. Um, no, 52 yeah. to 48%. Uh, say no to Cross Pro, narrowly edged it. Um, Times are a changing, man. Exactly. I mean, I say the trend. <laughs> so I like, in another two years, it'll be the other way. Um, mm -hmm. Sandeep says democracy doesn't work like that. <laughs> Who knows? I've, I've, two polls of one, you've lost twice. <laughs> it's even best out of three, you've lost. <laughs> so best of five, perfect. No, but the um, obviously that's quite interesting, uh, partly for us UK folk who get flashbacks when they see 50-40 in any kind of split these days. Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> um, secondly, um, uh, thanks for, for joining in on a random uh, mud slingy argument. And also, we really enjoyed some of the people's responses. So there were obviously the people who were moderates, and they said we voted, but also, um, you know, let's be grown-ups. I've blocked all of those people. Terrible human beings. <laughs> and some people went out with the old Jurassic Park memes. Um, you were so busy trying to think whether you could, you didn't stop to think if you should, um, <laughs> which I thought was quite funny. And then Lomography um, obviously waded in. Um, because of their, they, they set their stall up quite early. But they sent me a brilliant article. Um, so it's written by somebody called Single Elderly on their Lomography stall. I'm going to show that. Then I'm going to show the article because I think there's, there is actually a really useful point here. So here we have, um, this is the person who wrote it. So if you want to follow them, see a little bit more, Lomography Home, Single Elderly. Um, so thanks to them. This is one of the best graphics that I've seen. Um, now, again, I haven't gone to this in detail. I don't know how scientific how much data has gone into this. But when we talk about the, the tone shift, and we've seen that a little bit here um, in the photos we said, um, blues and greens come out quite strongly. But what the person's done here is that they've, they've gone through and said, well, actually, when you cross-process these slide films in C41, what tones are you most likely to get shot for a reasonably metered scene um, with the usual camera? Um, you can see there's a heavy weighting towards blue and green. Ag for Precise CT that Sandeep ran the experiment on traditionally comes out pretty strongly blue, which Sandeep, I don't know. Whether I you think I'd, I'd say that's pretty, pretty much how they did it on the blues. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. So yeah, exactly. People have seen that come through pretty strongly. Um, Cross Pro Chrome um, comes through pretty blue, but the X Pro Slide 200 comes out pretty yellow. You can see there's not so much that comes out warm apart from, um, the, the, the Fuji Velvia, Fuji Sensia. Um, as I say, I'd, I'd always recommend not touching Velvia because of its, its purity. Because it's a sin. Because, because, <laughs> because the high priest Sandeep will curse yeah. you. Um, and this yeah. is a great article. So I'm going to put this in a link at the bottom of the video um, when, it, when it refreshes tomorrow. Because here they've gone through and they've, they've analysed and shown examples across them. And what this is really helpful, I think, is if we go back to that point of thinking about cross-processes and adding another creative tool to your arsenal, this will give you a bit of a guide to start with um, to understand what kind of thing you're looking for. So if you're looking for something to be quite strongly red, you, you'll know which ones to go for or blue or whatever. Um, but that's really useful. Sandy, we've had a really good question come in. I've just seen it from Ben, hip shoot field. Is that the question? It might be, yeah. So um, you're famous for two things on Twitter. Yeah. Shooting slide and eating custard cream. So would you <laughs> rather... And, and bear in mind... Hold on, American in the room. Can you just explain what... It's, it's like a proper version of a cookie. Tastes good and is not fake. Uh, you confuse me even more with that statement. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a British biscuit, double-layered bit of cream in the middle. And, and how much... Ah. Is, there, is there custard in it? There's custard-flavoured, chemically creamy stuff, yes. <laughs> Preservatives and all sorts of things. Perfect. A sandwich cookie. Yeah. Sort of a sandwich cookie. Sort of not. We'll send you a photo. Yeah. <laughs> and maybe a real one. We'll send you a real one. We'll send you a real one. Um, so if you had to cross pro all your films, and we're not even going to say slide there, every film you submit to the lab, they just switch yeah. e E6 and C41 doing the, the wrong way the whole time. Or never eat a custard cream ever again, which would you do? 
it's, it's just never happened. I'm not even going to answer or entertain. And Ben, when I next see you in the pub, I ain't buying you a beer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. So it's even, on YouTube. We're gonna, that, that's not going anywhere. <laughs> that's a history now. Exactly. No, there we go. That is a fact. So, so that, in fact, I'm, I'm going to go downstairs, eat some custard cream while looking at some lovely slides. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Even the question upset him. I think that's absolutely yep, fair. Absolutely. <laughs> that's brilliant. Um, well, that was... Um, most of what we want to talk about, so we've still got the competition to show the results of um, the, the favorite photos that Sandeep saw cross-processed on Instagram. And before we go to that, uh, Rib, Sandeep, is there anything else that you wanted to cover, either resources or points to make or things you want people to think about? Uh, I would say, oh yeah, thanks. I would say uh, film photography is one of the few kind of venues where promiscuity is, is, is allowed and encouraged. So I say cross process to your heart's desire. Brilliant. And, and then what, what other areas of life is promiscuity highly encouraged, Ribs? Oh, food. Yeah. Eating, eating, definitely. Biscuits. Bis I'm very promiscuous in food as well. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Sandeep, any other sort of... Yeah, I just say, look, I, I, look again, I started with the each to their own. I'm, I'm totally... Totally, totally on board with that. But just don't ever cross pro Velvia and then come and talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll leave it at that. Perfect. So in terms of... Principles. Okay, well, we'll, I'll tell you what, we'll wrap up with the other resources. Let's go to the competition. So um, again, Sandeep, I um, bullied you in a way um, by you saying did. there is on Instagram, people had to submit photos of cross process. But we said, you know, regardless which chemical, which film, it doesn't matter. That's okay. Yeah. Um, and we said choose some favorites. So the winner, the winner will receive Provia 100, 120, and Ectochrome 135 mil, which you can do whatever you wish with, and we will all support you in your endeavors. All right then, so we had, uh, you've got two uh, honorable mentions and then you've got the winner. So let's go to screen share and let's talk about the first one. So here we have, we have Bill Thu in Sydney. He shot Rolly Crossbird, which again is a film that the manufacturer Rolly recommends you you cross process. It's slide shot in C41. What do you like about this photo? I, I think it's I think the scene's really good. Um, it's worked really well with the crossbow because you've got the dark shadows but the bright lights of the night scene of the city. You've got the kind of the red, white, and blue lights coming across. So I, I, I just like the scene. I think it's well done. You've got the jetty. It's not the typical just the city. I think it's just well com composed, I guess is probably the word. No, and it'd be interesting to see actually what this could look like, because I don't know how much, the colour shifts don't look too crazy, do they? Um, but I think the X-Pro works because it deepens the shadows and so boosts the night lights and the light shining on the water. So that's probably why it worked. Brilliant. So well done, Bill. A very worthy honourable mention. Second honourable mention, Toby. So Toby with the tube lines. Oh, here we go. Lomography classic sprockets. Well, I, you know, I had to pick this one. It's got, it's got X Pro. It's got sprockets. It's got color shifts. It's so on brand. It's ridiculous. <laughs> but it, but it looks, it does work. I mean, it's, it also, it's also got so, grungy, out of focus metal work. Which exactly. I mean, t Toby should just work for lomography with that shot. <laughs> this this is genuinely one of the photos I could see on their packaging. And, exactly, and I, and, and I mean that in, in the best possible way. This is, this is absolutely the aesthetic, um, yeah. and I do like the leading lines and the drama and the green. Like it almost looks bioluminescent. Like well, he's also gone sprockets up, but then got the leading lines of the tube yeah. going along. I think it's good. It's clever. No, really lovely photo. So well done, Toby. Another very worthwhile honourable mention. And then the winner, who I believe I have seen lurking on the comments a couple of times, the winner is Mr. Andrew Bra. Andrew Bartram, Warboy Snapper on Instagram with a brilliant pull shot. So what do you like here, Sandy? Well, I'm going to start with, I feel physically sick because that's Velvia. <laughs> um, but let, let's just get that out of the way. But it, it, it's a real shot with real feeling and emotion. I think the colours give you that summer feeling without it being harsh, which I think in E6, if you took that picture, to be fair, it probably would be too strong. And too blue or too, too summery. This has given it a nice warm, hazy summer afternoon dip in the pool look. And do you think that's one twenty? 
Um, I can't. It says LC look... but it's cropped square, medium format Velvia cross processed. And... If he's on the comments, he might be able to tell us maybe. Oh yeah, hopefully. No, that's fantastic. I think what I really like about this as well is it looks very um, 60s or it's, 70s, isn't it? The the the, the color. It's a hazy Sunday afternoon by the pool vibe. I like it. Yeah, brilliant. Okay, well done, Andrew. Um, I haven't seen him accept his. Oh, we'll do applause. Applause, Andrew. Yay! Yay! And then a party noise as well. <laughs> <laughs> So, Andrew, you will, um, I'll ping you and we will get you. Oh, there we go. What have I missed? <laughs> yeah, welcome back, Andrew. Um, you yeah. missed a little bit of abuse and uh, a victory. So you have um, some film coming your way and you may do with it whatever you wish and we will all support you in your endeavours. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for the debate. Thank you, everyone from uh, who has contributed. Thank you, everyone, for complimenting my beard. Um, that was nobody. Um, <laughs> Further resources. So, so Sandeep's article that supports those photos with a bit more detail is coming out on Emulsive Saturday lunchtime. Saturday UK lunchtime, correct. Brilliant. And that's emulsive.org. Yeah. Yeah, emulsive.org. Fantastic. Um, Ribs, you've got, I counted three cross-process videos on doing film things, but there may be more. The one we didn't actually talk about, but I, I'm going to watch later, is um, you turned Colour Plus into Slide. That's the hit right there. That, that one, people... I, I, I didn't, obviously didn't invent that, but I feel like a lot of people did not know about that until I messed up and did it accidentally. You, you did it accidentally? But, well, sorry. The origin was accidental, but the color plus was intentional. Nice. Okay. Sorry. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Actually, Rich, we've... Rich, Rich, always say you meant it. Yeah. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah and, and you're open to exhibits anywhere in the world, yeah. actually. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's fantastic. Actually, we've just got a ton of Color Plus in store, so if people want to try Slide, that is genuinely, I think, going to be one of my next. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's going to add to my list of 20 projects. Now, that's fantastic. So go to Doing Film Things to see some of that stuff. Lomography, as well, has some awesome, awesome stuff. I will, as I say, that article is probably the place I'd start with to understand a little bit about the different things you can get, but there's a host of different stuff. Um, and then, obviously, Instagram with the various hashtags will, will, will be your friend as well. That's it for now. Thank you so much, guys, for taking your time. Thank you so much for sending in the photos. Um, congratulations once more to Andrew. And then we will be back next week with another hot topic, more photos, more competitions, more fun. Have a wonderful weekend and, and rest of the week. We will see you soon. Cheers. Thanks, everyone. Peace. Peace.